Okay, so now that we've configured stream sets, we're going to go move on to our Twitter demonstration. So there are a few ways you can get um, data into Snowflake in a streaming fashion. Um, obviously, we're going to be connecting to the Twitter API. Um, many architectures, you'll have a, a, a streaming event hub like Amazon Kinesis, Kafka, or Azure event hubs to store that information in a resilient fashion prior to um, moving it into the data warehouse platform. Uh, and that can set up a, a Lambda type architecture in that example. For, for While we're using stream sets, we're going to skip that step. We're going to drop straight into Amazon S3 um, and then uh, use our bulk loader to push that into Snowflake so we can really handle huge volumes of data um, with this pattern because our bulk loader really can handle um, millions of events uh, every minute, really. <laughs> So what we first want to do in Snowflake is create a table for our tweets. We're going to call it Trump tweets, JSON data, and a variant column type. So this is how we handle semi-structured data, because the data coming out of that API is in JSON format. Now, um, two other things we have to do. We have to create a bucket in S3. Um, and we have to build a reference to that bucket. So I'm not going to show you how to create the bucket in S3. You can do that through the S3 management console by creating a trunk bucket or a trunk folder within your bucket. What we are going to show you is in Snowflake actually building the stage and the file format to connect to that bucket. So trunk tweets is the new table we've created. So if we go to our database tab, go to our tables tab, we can see the trunk tweets table there. That's good. What we now need to do is create a stage. Uh, and we're going to create a Snowflake Academy stage to that S3 bucket. So this is a reference for Snowflake to access that stage. So we would call it Snowflake Academy. Just going to put it in the public schema. We would put our bucket reference in there and our Amazon key and secret key. Now I've already created that stage here. It's as simple as that. We also want to create a file format. Again, very easy. Um, JSON file format um, to switch to JSON. Now I know the Twitter data um, quite well. It doesn't actually require any of these optional parameters, I don't believe. Uh, it may have to strip the outer outer array actually. Um, I need to double check that. Um, but yes, so that's that's how easy it is to create um, the JSON file format. And in fact, yes, I have when I created this earlier, uh, it's worth if you are connecting to Twitter to strip that outer array because everything received from the Twitter API has uh, an, an enclosed array that we want to strip. So um, having done that, we now have our file format and our stage. Uh, we can start to stream this data in. So within stream sets, uh, I've already created uh, a pipeline earlier, but it is a very simple step. Um, to start creating a pipeline and start to build your stream. So connecting into HTTP, for instance, is what we're going to use to connect into Twitter. Um, but I'll go to the one that I've already created earlier. So the architecture, as I mentioned before, was streaming from Twitter into an S3 bucket. We're then going to call an event which bulk loads into Snowflake. And that's going to continuously run this, this streaming uh, pattern. Um, into Snowflake. So, first off, some of the things you need to set for your origin HTTP client setup. So, give it a name. This is the address, so you can get this on the blog, uh, of the Twitter Stream API, which filters based on tracking terms. I've put in some politician names here that we're going to compare tweeting about. So, we've got Trump, Putin, ScoMo, Obama, and Bolsonaro. Um, I don't believe authentication type is OAuth. That's what you will have got when you signed up at the Twitter API. So if you go to the Twitter developer site here uh, and apply for an account, you uh, will get some credentials. Very easy then to put those credentials in. You have four spots here. Once you sign up, uh, Twitter will send you those. You just plug them into the credentials page. Uh, you just want to make sure the data format set set to JSON. I've set a max object length. You'll never exceed that because Twitter does have some restrictions on its um, on the size of tweets, so uh, 
that's saying a maximum object length of about 16 megabytes, but um, you'll never hit that. <laughs> and I think that is it for our first phase, which is connecting to Twitter, and that's going to bring that into stream sets. Next stage, uh, you want a destination. So um, a destination step, which is Amazon S3. Um, you want to click on produce events. What that means is that whenever anything gets dropped in that S3 bucket, it's going to call an external event, which is this load to Snowflake. And then we just want to put in the your Amazon credentials, the bucket, and the folder we created, which was Trump. That's going to drop everything in that Trump tweets folder. Uh, each object is going to be called SDC, uh, with a prefix SDC. I'm not sure why I chose that prefix, but that's the, just the name of the files. Finally, the data formats going to be JSON again in that step. Okay, and the final step is the bulk load into Snowflake. Again, give that a name. Uh, now, this is the JDBC connection string to Snowflake. It's available on our website. The parameters you'll need to change to your own are the name of your account, the region you're in. I'm in Frankfurt at Snowflake, um, and the DB name. And it's as simple as executing a SQL query. So um, the SQL query is our bulk loader, which is our copy into command. So I'm copying into the table I created earlier from that stage that I also created, the Trump stage, using the file format JSON that I created earlier. And what we're going to do is we're going to click play on that. We should start to see data streaming in from the Twitter API. Okay, so some Twitter activity already happening. Um, quite a lot. I suspect that's going to be Trump, but we will find out. So while that's running in the background, I'm going to show you how to stream directly using JDBC. Now, the kind of volumes that we were dealing with there, we could have done a direct JDBC write. Um, but if you are working in millions, potentially millions of events every second, or really large volumes of data, you may want to um, look at our bulk loader capability. But if you, you've got quite a small, small stream, you can do JDBC inserts. So I've set up a, a dev random source here. Um, that's uh, generating a few fields, A, B, C, and just some random data um, within that. And the destination in this case was a JDBC producer, which I've called JDBC write. And again, you're going to use the same connection string, and I'm dropping this into the public schema test table. If I go back into Snowflake, I have a test table here with three columns, three varkar columns, A, B, and C. I've set the field to be the A field, B field, and C field. If we click play on that. That's going to start a stream. Um, which is going to drop data directly into Snowflake via JDBC. So we're not going through that S3 bucket. Now, uh, one of the things I didn't mention there was that you want to make sure that you enable batch mode. There's an option uh, within the configuration which is use multi-row operation. Now you just want to make sure that is ticked. So that significantly improves performance using our JDBC. If you don't have that unticked, you're going to get very, um, very slow performance. So we do support batch mode within our JDBC, so I strongly support uh, turning that on. So um, some healthy inputs, 26,000 records, records inserted, uh, the throughputs only about 487 um, a second. Obviously, uh, we, we, we could be doing tens of thousands of writes uh, every second I've seen via the JDBC. Okay, now 
while that's streaming, we'll start to review the data that's being dropped into Snowflake. So if we go back to our Snowflake interface here and we select from the table called Trump Tweets, we can start to see that JSON data's um, started to filter in there. This is the JSON that the Twitter API has handed back to us. Um, so we can start to see some of the information within the tweet um, just by selecting a start. Not very useful in its raw form. Now you can get these commands from our website, but this is how you could start to explore JSON data in Snowflake. This command here is very useful to figure out all the attributes that exist within a JSON. So it, this, these are all the fields that exist within the Twitter JSON. Um, you can get that from the Twitter API documentation, but this is just a quick way to say, well, we know there's a country field in there, which is a bar car. Uh, we know that there's a following field, a timestamp, um, full text of the tweet, so all, all the fields can be can be ascertained in their data type using that. And then uh, even more so, we can uh, start to actually dive into that by using our lateral flatten recursive function to get all the keys, the path of that key within the JSON, and some examples of the data that exists within it, the, the value within it. So. Um, this is where you can start to actually see some of the Twitter data itself. So we can see the URLs. We can see the tweet user ID, Robert Costa. So again, this is just for exploring um, the Twitter data so you can start to get a bit of a feel um, for what's existing within that JSON data. What's really powerful now is we want to dive into this data and flatten it out so that, it, that, it, that we can start to query it in an easy fashion. So by just grabbing the path of one of these, so created at is the path. So you can see we prefix it with JSON data, which is the field name, and created at is the path. So you want to go field name and then the path. Um, so for user mentions, we're grabbing the entire path for the ID of the user mentions, or in this case, we're getting the name of the user mentions um, directly from that. Now, if we run that query, uh, that's going to start to flatten some of that data out into user mentions, user description, the tweet itself. So um, an interesting tweet there, which I won't explore more. Um, but yeah, we've started to grab out the tweets, who was mentioned, and in some, some, some instances, the country where that tweet came from. So um, already we're starting to get some value out of that Twitter data. So that's pulling out those values, the country value, which we'll use later, um, the tweet itself, and some user description information. Uh, now we want to pull out hashtags. And this is, uh, I'm going to introduce you to our lateral flatten function here. So you can have one or more hashtags within a JSON. So not everyone will have one hashtag. Some might have two, some might have 10. So what we can do here is use this lateral flatten feature here. So a lateral flatten, it's, just, it's a join to the original tweet and saying, as the input for that, take the JSON data field and into the entity's hashtags uh, value within that JSON data. And that's going to flatten hashtags out no matter how many there are. So it's going to create multiple rows for every hashtag. And then if I run that query, we start to get some very interesting user description information there. We can see the hashtags here. So this is the same user, the same tweet, but multiple hashtags. So he's hashtagged that with a few uh, random hashtags there. Um, but this is a way that, yeah, you can flatten that information out and see all the hashtags associated with this user's tweets.